Hi there, today you are going to join me at the Goodwill on Royerstown Road in Lancaster. Now this, this Goodwill can be a hit or miss. This is a really cute mug with a boxer on it, but there were scratches. This can be a hit or miss because sometimes it's great and sometimes you walk in and you're like, there's, there's nothing here. So challenge accepted Goodwill. Let's see how good I did. We are starting off in the cups and mug section, the little Ireland egg cups and then this little creamer that is probably most likely made in Japan and didn't really see any other mugs that stood out to me and you know how I I love buying mugs <laughs> I bought I bought quite a few lately but I've actually sold quite a few so that's good too this has been here uh, since the last time I was there I always expect to see some kind of signature on it because I know if I made that I would definitely put have put my name on it but it doesn't have a signature on it and this vintage, fabulous Las Vegas pedestal mug was pretty cool. Still looking to see if there's any like vintage or old items. And I wasn't quite seeing them, but there was a bag with an owl and a swan and a cardinal, which I thought was kind of funny because those are th three things that I like to buy, <laughs> but I didn't buy that bag. I'm a Gemini. My birthday is in May, so I thought that was neat. It had a lot of wear to it but I still admired it. And now we are moving on into the plates and dishes section. It's a giant clear glass brandy snifter there. I wasn't quite sure what these were. If I remember, I think that they were plastic. Then look at this giant piece and it was priced fairly decent. And then when I flipped it over, do you see the crack right there? It's running on, on top of my thumb. See it? It was a huge giant crack. I wonder if they didn't see that when they priced it because I would think that this would be kind of dangerous if someone, if it cracked more and broke, but, oh, and then this was not milk glass. This was ceramic. It looks like a bridal box. I believe they're called bridal boxes. I was just watching George, the antique nomad talk about them. Then this little cookie jar, I think it's a German cookie jar, but it was missing a lid, which was unfortunate. If it had the lid, I would have thought more about it, but I think you kind of need a lid to keep your cookies nice and fresh. And then someone had a collection of calendar plates. This was a Zodiac calendar, and then they just had the regular years. If I remember correctly, it was um, 1968, I think, and it went to 1971. I thought those were neat. I always get a kick out of looking at the dates on those kind of calendars, plates. And then this Alaska plate caught my eye. When I worked in Alaska, people used to get mad. Um, they were always like, where are the things that are made in Alaska? Because they would see mugs made in China. This plate was not made in Alaska. And it's funny, I don't think you go to other states and go, where are the things made in Nebraska? But in Alaska, we always got that question, where are the items that are made in Alaska? And the items that are made in Alaska by artisans and stuff are pretty expensive most you know rightly so because they have a lot of work going into their artwork isn't this pretty look how pretty this is i thought that was really nice i had had a barcode on the center there um that would have been perfect for spring and at the time i was like well i'll think about it and i did forgot to think about it <laughs> and i forgot to go back and get it i did find this vintage mary planter and while I was turning her around, I was like, please don't let there be any cracks. Let her have all her fingers and her nose. And she did. She's so pretty. Then, you know, I love looking at boxes that have, you know, graphic, vintage graphics on it. I call it the Sonic Action Jewelry Cleaner. And it does so much. It can clean so much. Look at that move with one hand. <laughs> it can. Look at all it can do. It can clean your, your tools and your jewelry and your silverware. I kind of peeked at the end here. Oh, and your coins. I kind of peeked in there. I didn't pull anything out, but it looked like everything was in there. When I peeked real quick, it looked like there was stuff in there. And then I kind of struggled a little bit closing it, but I love looking at the graphics that they put on older boxes of items. And now we're moving on into the blue section. This little guy caught my eye. It is uh, marked Dominican, I think Dominican Republic. It's a little frog. I really like the colors on it. It's so simple, but it's so cute. I thought somebody might like it. People do like frogs. I like frogs. I thought it was pretty. That's why I picked it up. 
and then they had these luggage tags and they looked like they were sold at the Disney parks. And I saw two of them, I thought, hmm, that's interesting that someone would have them and donate them. And then I was admiring the vintage Tupperware and the toilet game. And then near it, look, there's a th there's three of them, three of those luggage tag thingy majiggies. And let's see, oh, down there is your coupon binder set for when you clip coupons. And now we don't even clip coupons anymore. You just have it on your phone. You just have to remember the app, the password to the app, so you can use your coupons. I'm not speaking from experience at all. <laughs> I'm constantly changing the password on the shopping apps. What did I save it as last? This was an interesting bird. Terrible job of showing you the whole bird. I'm so sorry. It was kind of a resiny plastic and it was not made out of wood. And then here they had some terracotta angels. They had uh, two angel heads and then an angel that was lying down. Had a whole mishmash of stuff in this aisle here. And then the, here are their restocking carts. And one time I saw a sign that says, please do not dig through the carts. So ever since then, I will just peek and I'll do a little walk by and maybe pick up one thing, but I don't dig through them. This was also a neat looking bird. Uh, I've picked up large birds before. I remember the two paper mache birds that I picked up, but this one, I just, I felt like it was missing like the ring that it would have sat on. So I did put that back, giving you more of a look at the shelves here today. This was interesting, this kit. I always like to see what things are and if it would be interesting to make for myself or to resell. That was just a bag of sewing things. And then I knew this was handmade, but they had covered it to protect their furniture. So I uh, didn't know if it had a signature or not. And I was looking to see if this was Boyd's Bear, if it was from the Halloween collection, because I do like to sell the Halloween items. Now up on the top shelf was this little, I'm going to say vignette, but that's probably not the right word. It was very, very dusty. So of course I was immediately attracted to it. And it says Heavenly Harmonies, and it was part of Hummel. And when I looked it up, you could use it as a display. And I almost got it, but then I realized at the last moment, there was a bird broken off the one tree there. And it would have sold nicely, but not with the bird missing. I, I thought that wasn't very nice. So it stayed there. Here was a little hobbyist piece. Someone had signed it there on the bottom. I was going to get it. I kind of thought about it a little bit. I don't think I show it to you, but there is a chip on the back end of this turtle. And you couldn't really see how cute the face was. So that was another reason why I didn't pick it up. Then these were neat. They were marked Pier 1. And it looked like they were monogram plates because doesn't that look like a J or an I or an L? So it would be very specific if I bought those. And then the cactus I thought was funny, a little cactus pillow, or maybe it was a toy for your dog. Susie would have liked that. And I don't think I find anything else here. But on the end, on the side, the, like the back of the store, this is where we are now, there was this, it looked like a Tom Clark gnome. And then when I turned it around, there was that the Seavers or Sivers signature. And then her name is Rose. She is number 58. And she is a Tom Clark Karen gnome. And she is happily raking her leaves. And then I saw this and I was like, oh, I know somebody. I live with somebody who will like this. And he, do he does like them. He's going to hold on to them for a little bit. <laughs> and then we might sell them. But he, he was very excited when I brought those home. This was a whole flat of these old beer steins from Lancaster County from 1990. Thought that was very interesting. Then here was a little Talavera bird. I thought that was cute. I thought that was very sweet. I like how he has like a giant beak. And now I am in the toy section. Those were just, a, I think, erasers. And look how they've emptied out the stuffed toys. This is usually packed full of stuffed animals and toys and things. But there was just one little lonely basket. It was nice. And then we moved on to another section and I found this teapot and I was like, oh, it doesn't have a lid and it has five cups and it had such a pretty, I think there are cherry blossoms on it. And then I realized there's the lid. And then I wanted to open up the bag to see if there were any chips or cracks to it. It has a bamboo handle that's wrapped in light pink plastic 
So there we go. Let's open it up and check it out. It's so pretty. There's five cups. And I learned from Jocelyn that she figured out, some. she learned that Japanese things usually come in sets of five, which I find interesting because in America, we're always like sets of two, four, six, eight. But if I remember correctly, a full set in Japan is five. So there are five cups and the teapot. And I thought this was cute, the graphics on this tablecloth. And then underneath it was this book, Swear Words, Coloring Calendar, <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. So I looked at it off camera. This I thought was very sweet. It's to hold your keys. It's a vintage piece made in America. And then when I looked down on the bottom shelves here, I saw this light and I used to have one of these lights when I was little, mine was white and it was a love hate relationship because it always like kink off balance. And then it was attached to a shelf and then the shelf would go flying. Oh, it was kind of chaotic a little bit whenever I tried to turn the light on. This is really neat. This mid-century modern wooden cheese tray and it's um, made in America. I'm looking at the signature there and that little round part would have had a little metal ring that you would have attached the chain and the knife to. These were up on a shelf so you didn't see me pick them because uh, she got them up off the shelf behind the register and then this is little Andrew by Sadiq mouse. So those are two other things but there is everything I got. Here is a closer version of everything that I picked up on this trip to Goodwill. Jenny and I are currently in Oregon as you are seeing this. We are visiting my folks. It has been almost four years since I've seen them and so I am looking forward to sharing some thrifting adventures with you here in Oregon. I hope you enjoy those videos. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you are having a great day and I'll see ya.